Salamat po. Kapatid na. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Christopher and Sister Abby. Husband and wife tandem. Huh? Praise God. Mag-uso yata yan. Huh? Praise God. You know what? Uh, I'm so blessed because I believe that all the songs that we have sung, uh, I, I, I can't understand why, but all the songs are really, really, you know, fit in our message today. I'm so blessed. I'm so glad. You know, singing sounds like uh, we believe that God has chosen us. We are a chosen generation. And how God has taken us, taken us out of the darkness to His marvelous light. It's amazing. That light is in us. We are His light in this world. And we are so privileged because we believe that because we are God's chosen people, we have this great uh, privilege and opportunity to always come to Him. You know, uh, that we can uh, give everything to, to the Lord. We can always come to Him. In fact, the, song, the second song, I don't know, I forget the title of the second song, but it's really nice that I, uh, everything. I, I like the lyrics. Uh, every day, everything. we give everything for the Lord. You know, we do everything for the Lord. That's the essence of the song. And... Uh, Wow, even the third song actually, so praise the Lord. What's the title of the third song? It's to, it's to, oh, that's a hymn. I remember my old days. Singing hymns. This, this is with the trust in Jesus. It's included in our message. Trust in Jesus. I, I really love the song, praise God for that. And of course the last song is... Who am I? Who am I? God is really mindful of me. Sino nga ba tayo? Who, who are we? <laughs> After all, some says that we are God's chosen people. We are God's possession. Precious possession. Anytime we can come to Him, anytime we can glorify Him, we can honor Him, and anytime you can ask him about our needs, about our life, or our condition, even our situation. So we praise the Lord. And I believe that all of us can truly uh, relate with the message of the songs. Praise God for that. We've been discussing a theme for this uh, quarter. And so far we have discuss uh, lengthily some of the things that we need to understand as, as disciples of, of, of God, of Jesus. And uh, this quarter we've been discussing the essence of ministry. Because that's the way we can truly respond to His calling if we truly understand the essence of ministry that God has given us. And we have pointed out that it, is, it has an eternal purpose. So we're so privileged that we know that, that, that ministry has an eternal purpose. So what we're doing is really uh, for the Lord. And uh, so this month, we are discussing, what, what is the theme for this month? Chosen vessel. We've been discussing this, that God has chosen us for His purpose. Chosen vessel. It is important for us as Christians nowadays to understand that we as Christians, this life that we have as Christians is so blessed that even the God himself chose us to be his and to be used for his purpose. In spite of who we are, we are all sinners. We are not worthy to be called his sons and daughters. But because of his grace, he called us. Just last Friday, we pointed out about how, how God chooses us, how, how what God's choosing entails fruit bearing. It is required upon us that as Christians, we have to bear fruit because God has, chose, has chosen us to be His children, to be His disciples. So we need to bear fruit. There we pointed out that we are, are 
his prime recipients of his blessings. And so we're so privileged that God even called us his prime regency for his ministry. He entrusted to us his ministry. And therefore we can truly enjoy that privilege of uh, communing with him, coming to him, as we enjoy continuously his provision. In every day of our life, we do experience his provision. And so I believe we truly understand, we truly, truly, truly understand the, the essence of who we are as God has chosen us. But we are so privileged to be used by Him. Now, we've been pointing out that we have been receiving blessings as if, you know, we can truly enjoy everything in life because we have Christ, we have Jesus in our life. But what about if this vessel or a life of bodies experience difficulties? Experience trials, concerns, problems, difficulties in life. Would you still believe that still we are God's chosen? Because there are a lot of teachings for nowadays that if you experience uh, sufferings, then you are not with God. Because they, they thought that as children of God, you do not, you do not experience suffering or trials or testing. There are, there are kind of teachings like that. But I always believe that in this vessel, our life, I always believe that everything that we experience, God has a purpose. And that is for us as disciples and Christians to understand that still we are His chosen people. That God has a purpose whenever we come and we encounter such difficult times in life. Nowadays, each of us probably, I, I, I hope that, I believe that we, we experience varied uh, circumstances, difficulties in life. But I pray that these things will not hinder us or hamper our desire and commitment to continually serve our God because we are His people. Now I would like to bring your attention to this kind of idea as I believe even the disciples of God during their time experience difficulties, trials, testings that truly tr 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 challenged their, their faith, their, their, their commitment but still they were able to overcome their experience uh, victories in the Lord because they continue to believe that they are God's people, God's children. Yes. A servant of God in the New Testament, I would like us to study this morning. And if you have your Bibles with you, please turn with me to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 8 to 10. Second Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 8 to 10. Very familiar, I believe. A good evening from NIB, and again, once again, I invite each one to please rise and reverence to his word, and I'll be reading verses 8 to 10. Let's follow it up to me, silent day, your own transcriptions. It says here, Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why for Christ's sake I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecution, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. May God bless the reading of His Word. Let's pray for a moment. Father, thank You for the power of Your Word. And we believe the Holy Spirit, through His power, 
that you will bless this passage in our hands today, O oh God. As probably many of us have been going through difficulty, difficulties, hard times, O oh God. We have problems, concerns in our life. We just ask, O oh Lord, that you will speak to us, O oh God. Give us an open heart and mind to be able to observe things that you want us to understand today and be able to apply it in our lives, O oh God. Thank you for the presence of each one, once again, for bringing us here to worship you. And most especially, thank you for your presence on us today, through the Holy Spirit. Just ask that you will empower each one of us as we worship you, in spirit and in truth. Thank you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's be seated. Thank you very much. The idea of the text that I have that we have read is Paul's strong conviction and resolution in life after hearing the Lord's reply in his petition to take away the affliction from his body. As I said, Apostle Paul, I would I would consider him as one of the great apostles of the Lord, and yet we can see in this passage that he himself had experienced difficulties. I mean, he experienced witness, or should I say witnesses, affliction in his life. And Paul himself prayed to his Lord, to our Lord. According to the text, he prayed three times for this. And that is the idea of the passage that we're going to discuss this morning. From this passage, let's have a purpose of the sermon so that in this particular study of ours, we will be able to have a wonderful lessons from the Lord. Uh, the, the purpose of the sermon is that we would realize the value of listening to our Lord as He responds to our petition, guiding us to see His purpose clearly, even in our affliction. Mind you, beloved in the Lord, even in our weaknesses and even in our affliction, God can speak to us. God is speaking to us, actually, when we are in that situation. He is. He continues to speak to us because we are His vessels. We are His chosen vessels. He cares for us. He cares for our growth. He cares for ourselves. He cares for our Christian life. He cares for everything in us. So when, whenever we go through difficult, difficult times, He will never leave us, nor forsake us. Be able to see this purpose, we have to see the central idea of the sermons. From this, we have to see that, that there are wondrous manifestations of the power of God's grace that works in our troubled life as earthen vessel for his purpose even in our human weaknesses. I have to say this manifestation of the power of God's grace. That's why even in our songs it is mentioned there about the grace of God working in us. The title of the message this morning the all-sufficient grace in an earthen vessel. It's really, I mean, I really love living a life full of grace. Right? Full of grace. And when we talk about grace, it is the grace of God that is really all-sufficient. In every circumstance, even in every given circumstance of life, God's grace is sufficient. Even to us as a chosen vessels, earthen, yes, weak. <coughs> but God's grace is enough. I know nobody is exempted that all of us experience difficult life. We encounter uh, problems, concerns in life. But we thank God because He loves us so much. He has chosen us. 
Let's take a look at this wonderful, uh, wondrous uh, manifestations of the power of cascades. Number one, as an earthen vessel being mortified for its eternal purpose, God's grace empowers us, empowers us when we are battered by infirmities and difficulties of life. Let us not forget the power of God's grace. Well, I use the word mortified, it has a lot of meaning if you look at it in the dictionary, but in this particular study of ours, I, I, I mean it as, you know, killing our pride. We need to mortify our pride in trusting ourselves. Uh, oftentimes we trust ourselves rather than trusting God. It's so common for us to trust ourselves. That's why we need to mortify it. And this is the, the, the blessings of God to us, that He, through His grace, been mortifying ourselves to be able to trust God. That's why this point, we have to see that really God's grace empowers us when we are bothered by infirmities and difficulties of life. We need to experience God's mortification of our own self. Because as I've said most often, we trust ourselves. Let's, let's take a look at this. Let's see this aspect in the life of Paul when he experienced these things. Letter A. There is a soulful petition of life that we can see. How he came to the Lord, how he came to God for, for this petition. Paul said, three times I pleaded with the Lord. To take it away from me. You know, no, he's talking about if you just go uh, uh, from the preceding verses, actually, you will see the context of this because he was uh, asking God to remove the thorn in the flesh. That is what he called in the passage, thorn in the flesh. I Meaning, it's, obviously, it's physical uh, infirmities, thorn in the flesh. This thorn in the flesh is really bothering him so much in his ministry. It, it, it does not uh, explain what it is really, it's just a thorn in the flesh. But obviously, this infirmity, this problem in his body is causing so much problem. It's causing so much problem in his life. That he came to the point of coming to God and, and asking Jesus, asking God to please, Lord, remove it or take it away from me. This has been hampering my ministry so much. This is the, the condition situation of Paul. And then you can see in this phrase, in this petition, that there are aspects of his life that you can see his very nature as a human being. He felt the heaviness of this infirmity. That's why he, he, he appealed to God three times. I pleaded three times. You know what we can see in his petition? Number one, there is persistency that shows the reality of the pain. He was so persistent in asking God three times. Actually, if you study this in, in, in the uh, biblical language, when, when, when you see the word three times, actually it's more than three times. It's just the idea of you know, coming back to God and, and, and asking God for, for reply. The person says this there. In the life of Paul, to be able to, to, to you know, experience the healing of God in his life. He, he is a vessel of God. That's why he needs this. There's nothing wrong with this, asking God for healing. There's nothing wrong. He needs it. He needed it, actually. So he, he needed to come to God and ask for, for, for healing. He was so persistent. God, please help me. It is a thorn in the flesh. Three times. Three times. And you can see the urgency. I pleaded. Not only that he was so persistent in coming to God, but at the same time, you know, he come, he came to God in, in urgency. I pleaded with the Lord. Notice, at the same time, the intimacy. You know what? Sometimes, 
when we encounter difficulties or problems in life, that, that, is, that, was, that is the time that we come to God closer. You know? That we become so intimate when we have some problems in life. It happens. I pleaded with the Lord. And he, just, he didn't say that. I pleaded to the Lord. But I pleaded with the Lord. The intimacy is there. He believed that even in spite of his difficulties in life, he can still come to God and ask for God's grace. I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. That is, he was so desperate in coming to the Lord. Human as you are, just like Paul, I believe if you were at Paul's shoes, probably you would, probably you would also do the same. You would also ask God the same thing. But what, what is noticeable in this aspect of Paul's petition is that he is asking for substitution. He's tired. Lord, can you replace my pain? With your healing task? There's not there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Especially when you're tired. You can ask God. But you know what? He's asking for substitution. He needed something that would truly strengthen him based on his own understanding, based on his present condition, based on his struggle at the moment. What he needed is this, Lord, take it away from me. It is, I believe, a soul for petition. And it's okay to come to God for that. But the good thing is, God has a better plan. Right? God has a better plan. God has a better solution in all that we think is right for us. In all that we think that is better for us, God has a better solution. <coughs> And I can see this letter B. There is a powerful inspiration in life whenever you are in the struggles, problems of life. Powerful inspiration indeed. Bring one up. Our text says, But he said to me, yeah, he presented his petition. Yeah, you know, he opened up his heart to the Lord, his, his condition. But notice the word, the first word. It is a strong adversity. It says, but. Did you notice that? In other words, God has a better idea. Aside from what you're asking for, uh, Paul, I have a better idea. I have a better solution. And most often, I believe, Guys, that solution is the best. But he said to me, what did Jesus say? My grace is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for you. Oh, what a grace. My grace is sufficient for you. And then he said, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Oh, I love this verse. Especially all of us, when we, when we have uh, difficulties in life, we have problems, we have infirmities, we encounter so much problems. Oh, I, I believe that you, you really love to quote this verse and apply it in your life. But what we can see in this phrase of, of, of Jesus, of our Lord, to Paul, there are three things important in this. Letter A at the disk, or letter B, or letter number one on the disk, is that 
there is a great assurance. There is a great assurance. When God answers our prayer, He gives us an assurance. He gives us an assurance. Why? Look, look at the phrase. But He said to me. But He said to me. It's, it's Jesus is God who is talking to Paul. But He said to me. In the original, when you study this in the original language, interesting. It is in the past tense, or in the, in the language of the, of the Greek, it's in the Irish tense, past tense. But he said to me, it means, I will say this once and for all. There is an assurance that what you will hear is from God and it's final. That is the idea, the original. But he said to me, What an assurance when you know that God is the one talking to you. When you know that God is the one speaking to you. It is a great assurance. But he said to me. You know one thing that I notice here? God will never withdraw his favor from his elect or from his children. He will never withdraw his favor. Because we are his chosen vessel, chosen people. He will never withdraw his favor. That's why when we experience things, you know, pleasing, blessed to us, we say, oh, it's God's favor. Praise God. It's his favor. Indeed, yes. And he will never withdraw. Because he never withdraws his favor from us. But he said to me, when was the last time you realized that God is telling you, I will tell you, my son, my daughter, I will take care of you. Are you going through difficult times in life? I have promised that I will never leave you, nor forsake you, because we are this chosen vessel. I will say this once and for all. I am the, I am the Lord that tells you this. But he said to me, not only that there is a great assurance in God's answer at this, but at the same time, number, uh, number two, there is a great promise in this. Look at the promise. My grace is what? Sufficient. My grace is sufficient. Wow. My grace is sufficient. I know, I know you've been experiencing the sufficiency of God's grace in your life. And He will continue to let you experience His sufficiency. And that means that He will allow you to go through difficult times, problems in your life. For us to experience more His grace. Because His grace is sufficient. That is His promise. What, what, I have, what I've noticed in this is that God never runs out of supply. We will be running out of supply. We will be running out of strength, ideas, everything, resources. But in God, there is sufficiency. There is sufficiency. Because that is His promise. My grace is sufficient. You know what, one thing more? God will proportion the remedy to our malady. Malady is weak, uh, pro sicknesses or pro problems in life. Concerns. Whatever kind of sickness we have. Sickness we have. But I always believe that God will proportion the remedy for our malady. In other words, there is never a shortage. In God. Are you worried? Because of what we're going through in life right now? Here in the Middle East? God said, my grace is sufficient.
my grace is sufficient. Praise the Lord. It is sufficient for our spiritual ministry, 2 Corinthians. It's there. His grace is sufficient for our spiritual ministries. Are you serving God wholeheartedly? I've been experiencing that. that. I feel sometimes I feel tired, exhausted. It's just the grace of God that sustains us in serving Him. I hope that the grace of God will continue to sustain you as you serve Him. It is sufficient. It is sufficient for our material needs. Second Corinthians 9 8. It is His promise. His grace is sufficient for our material needs. It is mentioned there in 2 Corinthians 9 8. It is sufficient for our physical needs. In the verse that we're studying right now, my grace is sufficient for your weakness. Second Corinthians 12 9. You know one thing is sure. Since God's grace is sufficient to save us, for sure, it is also sufficient in keeping us, in sustaining us, in strengthening us in times of suffering. Are you suffering? Are you having some kind of troubles in life? Physical, material, financial? That is His promise. His grace is sufficient. What a great promise in this phrase. My grace is sufficient for you. Not only great assurance, but not only great promise, but great guarantee. Great guarantee. Sabido. For my power is made perfect in weakness. God's power is made perfect in weakness. You know one thing I, I've noticed here? I believe God will never, never falter in His Word. For my power is made perfect in your weakness. I have seen in this phrase, for my power is made perfect, that it is a strengthening grace that we experience every moment, every day of our life. It is a strengthening grace that we experience. It is a strengthening grace because it is an, an accompanying grace. It is a accompanying grace. In other words, this is my own words. The more you go through pain, the more grace you gain. This is what I understand in this phrase. The more you go to go through pain. The more grace you gain. And in, you will never run out of this grace. What a powerful inspiration whenever we encounter problems in life. Because you are his chosen by self. Number four, number two, from Black Shevich. As an earthen vessel being molded by His eternal purpose, God's grace encourages us to always rely on the power of the Lord and glorify Him even in the painful experiences of life. That is in verse 9, if you can go back to our text in verse 9b. And in this uh, uh, verse, letter A, there is a willful resolution that you can see in the life of Paul that we can also uh, adopt in our life. Paul said, therefore, I will boast all the more Gladly about my weaknesses. Uh, wow. Probably you would, you would be wondering why, why, why Paul said this. Paul said this, I believe, because after hearing God's answer or reply to his petition, I believe he come up to this resolution. He come up to this 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 faith in his in his life. Paul, I believe now at this, at this juncture of his life, 
is experiencing the progression of the progressive faith. His faith is progressing. He realized that, is, that, is, that in God there is more than what he believes he can experience in his life. That, that's why his faith is progressing now. He is glorying in his infirmities. By this time, God, therefore, if you allow me to go to these infirmities and difficulties, then thank you. Use this for my faith. Use this to serve you. Use this to, for, for me to grow in my faith. No. Let me tell you that this is not actually a cry of a fanatic rejoicing in pain. He's not rejoicing in pain. He's not. But he is just glorying to God because of his infirmities. He is, because I believe his, his glorying rests on the assurance that Christ's power will be revealed to him. And will work in his weaknesses. It's so it's a good thing to realize and, and understand that sometimes God works in our weaknesses. God works in our difficulties and problems of life. He works in us. That's why you can see that okay, Lord, if this is it, then I'll go through it. I believe you will be with me as you have promised. Because your grace is sufficient, then I will go through it. This is his resolution. What a wonderful resolution on the, on the part of Paul. And not only that, you can see, let her be at the dead, is that there is a purposeful recognition of who, 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 who Christ is in his life, at this juncture of his life. So it says in the verse, so that Christ's power will rest upon me. So that Christ's power will rest upon me. What is this? Amazing. He would just glory in his infirmities because that is the best time that the glory and the power of Christ will work in his life. In other words, that, that the power of the Lord will remain in Paul. And of course, in the original, the word will rest on me. It's just like the idea of God will pitch a tent upon Paul's life. In other words, God will reside in the life of Paul, in his experience. God will reside in his life, in his experience. Wow. And that is to cover Paul, and that is to protect Paul, and that is to overshadow Paul in all the circumstances. It is the, it is the power of God that will rest in his circumstances. How would you like that when we are in the difficult time circumstances, his power will rest, will beat his tent upon our lives to cover us, to protect us, to encourage us. What a purposeful, purposeful recognition of the power of God. In other words, we love in the Lord. Christ's power sustains us in our weakness or weaknesses. He, he will be the one who will sustain us in our weaknesses. Third point that I would like to share with you. As an earthen vessel being, pardon my word, modified, I explained that, being modified for his eternal purpose, God's grace embraces us to find the strength of the Lord in the struggles of life. I use the word modified just for the sake of alliteration. Because we have discussed it. The, the idea of uh, being mortified, being molded, and now being modified for the sake of alliteration. But the meaning of the word modified is pacified, to ease. You know? Sometimes we, when we are in struggles, we could not contain our emotions, we could not contain our mind. We react. We react not according to His purpose and will. That is the tendency. But God's grace is there for us. To pacify or to modify us, to modify us, 
because that's part of the strength of purpose. And that is grace is embracing us for us to find the strength of the Lord in our struggles. And what we can see in this, in, in letter A, in verse 10, is a thoughtful conviction of Paul here. Paul said, that is why, for Christ's sake, sabi niya, I delight in weaknesses, I delight in insults, I delight in hardships, I delight in persecutions, I delight in difficulties. He mentioned everything that a person can experience in this life. That he can delight in these things. In these things. I delight in weaknesses. In other translation, he, he takes or he took pleasure in accepting these things in his life. Why? Because in all these things, all the more, he relies on the power of God in Jesus. He glorifies the Lord. He prioritizes Jesus in his life because of these things. Sometimes, sometimes we need to be reminded of our weaknesses, of the insults of our people, of the hardships that we experience, and persecutions from other people, and difficulties of life. Sometimes we need to be reminded by those things, by these things, so that we come to God, we glorify Him, we prioritize Him. He realized that He is called upon to endure for His Lord. You know what? Sometimes we, oh, we should oftentimes think of this that that God will use these things in life for us to really come to Him and, and rely on Him and believe in Him and experience His strength in our life. Paul is so conscious of all of, of the all sufficiency grace of Christ. He was so conscious that he can take pleasure, that he can take delight in any affliction, in any problems in life. Pascal said this is one of the authors. Only a morbid fanatic parang horrible only a more morbid fanatic can take pleasure in the suffering he inflict upon himself. Yes. And then only an insensitive fool, fool can take pleasure in the sufferings as consequences of his folly. And only a convinced Christian or disciples can take pleasure in suffering to endure it for Christ's sake. And this is Paul. Because he said a chosen vessel. And he has this conviction in his life. That's why I delight, Paul said, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, and hardship. Let it be what you can see after delighting in all these things. It is the power that God works in his life. What happened now? It, there is a wonderful transformation in his life. In his life, in his soul. Paul said, For when I am weak, then I am strong. What a paradox of life. Did you see that? For I am weak, then I am strong. How do you figure that out? Half body, this one is weak, this is strong. Is that the way you figure it out? I don't understand. But what you can see here is that. Paul is just describing the outcome when he experienced to his end of himself that Christ is seen at the end of his life. That Christ is glorified in his weakness. That Christ, that Christ is magnified in his life when he experienced this. That's why there is a transformation when it happens that when he is weak, then actually he is strong. Because Christ is in him. Because the grace of God is sufficient. That all that he delighted himself are all fair opportunities for his Lord to manifest the power and the sufficiency of, it, of the grace of God that successfully transformed his life of weakness to a life of strength. Beloved in the Lord, I tell you, only God can transform our life of weakness to a life of strength. It's only by his grace. I hope that 
we will experience this in our life as we go through difficult circumstances of life. Because we are His chosen vessel, we have to understand this. We all believe by grace. We are sustained by His grace. Keep on surrounding Him because His grace is sufficient. I close this. Apostle Paul claimed God's promises and drew on the grace offered to him. So his sin of tragedy, tragedy actually turned into triumph. God changed the situation. I want you to listen to this. God changed the situation not by removing the affliction, but by adding new ingredient, which is the all-sufficient grace of God in his life. Now, therefore, Paul lived in the all-sufficient grace of God. Yes, indeed. First Peter 5, 10 says that he, God is the God of all grace. Diba? And we have that. We have our God. Hebrews 4.16 says, We can always come to His TOG, throne of grace. Acts 20.32, His word is the word of grace. Delve into His word. You know, if you want to experience His grace more, then I, I challenge you to have find extra time to read His word. James 4, 6 says, He gives us more grace. Even in our infirmities, we can pursue, we can go on and live our life for His glory. There is a 30 second video that I would like to show you. It's about a little, uh, a little boy actually. I said in some Celeb, celeb, cerebral palsy. And yet, even the centrimeters could not hamper or stop him from, from doing what is best for, for his life. Just a third second, and I will close this in some comments. Can you close the, the light so that we can see that? Thank you, man. Child with liberal policy finishes triathlon. You know what a triathlon means? And with a cerebral policy, I mean with the child or with the kid with a cerebral policy, it's really a great challenge for him to join. But you can see, what we can see in the, in the video is that in spite of his infirmity, you know, he pursued this goal in life. He, he knew that he can do best. What about us? Dr. Warren says, physical affliction need not be a barrier to effective Christian service. Today's believers are too prone to pamper themselves and use every little ache or pain as an excuse to stay home from church or refuse to accept opportunity for service. Paul did not permit his ailment to become a stumbling block, but let God turn it into a stepping stone because he is sustained by his soul, by his Christ, also physically. We're going to have a close idea. We got this.